And as I was as I was studying this, I thought, how many of us ask God to keep us from evil? Not many of us. Anyway, when he asked that, he was somebody who was going to start out on his own. He knew God, and he was starting out on his own, and he wanted his protection. I thought it was pretty smart of him to ask to keep from evil. But you know what? As I was studying this, I brought my, my attention was brought back to John 17. I love this chapter, John 17. Where, God, where Jesus is praying. And he said in his prayer that we would be kept from evil. If you would turn to John chapter 17, and we're going to start with, we're going to start with verse 9. It says, and we're not going to read it all right straight down. It says, I pray this, I pray for them. I pray not that the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. He loved us not only to go to the cross, but to look in the future. And he said, I'm not praying for the world. I'm praying for the ones that you have given to me. And like Jabez, Jabez knew and we should know by now that we are in trouble after we get down and say, Lord, forgive me. And if we take on his salvation, we are a target for Satan. Because if we're not doing anything for Satan, he's not going to bother us. But if we plan to live for God, he is going to do everything he can to keep us from doing it. So if we don't pray, Lord, keep us from evil, we need to. Because Satan is a very smart, evil, evil thing. And God knew this, and Jesus knew this. So he said that he prayed for them, he prayed for us. Verse 12 says, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in in thy name. And as I was studying this, I, I keep thinking about people... What kind of people are we? Well, I'm telling you. It's easy to be a Christian when you're around Christians. And he said, I kept them with me. I, well, I, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. He kept them in line. He did what he was doing, and they followed. We need to have a someone to follow. We need an example. Well, the Bible says that he is our example. But it would be easier if we could all stick together and do what we wanted to do with each other because then we know that I'm not going to do anything wrong because Darla's not doing anything wrong and, and I'm, she's not doing anything wrong because Donna's not doing anything wrong. And we're all together and we're fighting this thing together. So we're, you know, we're, what they say, something about in numbers. You know, we're strength in numbers and when we're together. But when she goes to her home and I go to my home and she goes to her home, who do we have? We have ourselves. I remember when this, uh, when this virus thing started, there was a comedian, and she said, I, 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 it's hard to be by myself. She said, I argue, I'm the only one home, but I argue with myself because uh, it's uh, I, me, and mine. I, I, I argue with myself. You see, when you're by yourself, you're by yourself. And he said, while they were with me, I kept them. I was their example. I was their leader. Well, who is your leader? Who is your example? How often do you talk to your example? How often do you follow? Remember the first they said, keep your hand on me. Remember, God is with you all the time. He will, he will do anything that, he, that, would, that you need. He will help you and I'll guide you and lead you. But how many, we ask that, do we not? Because he is, he is 
wanting us to survive. So he says, while they were with me in the world, I kept them. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. All right. If he did it for them back there, he can do it for us today. Because the word says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Also, it says, I am God and I change not. So if God kept Jabez, Jesus can keep us. But we need to know that. Well, I know that, Laura. I know we know that. I know how to drive the car, too, but I don't do it all the time. I know God can keep me, but I don't always trust him all the time. I trust him when I need him. When do I need him? Every day. Do I trust him every day? Yeah, well, you know, not most of the time. You, you see, we have this old nature that we, we have to fight. And that's why Jabez says, keep me from evil. That's why we need to say, keep me from evil, because I'm going to tell you, I've been studying Revelation, and, uh, and it gave us uh, some characteristics of Satan, of the devil. Let me dig this out here. It says, in Revelation, the devil is called a dragon. A dragon because powerful. You don't think Satan is powerful? Let me tell you. He is very strong. Evilness is his business. He is also called the serpent. The serpent way back in, in uh, Genesis, when this little old sneaky snake came crawling down and God gave him a voice, He's sly. He's cunning. He's smart. Well, I'm as smart as a snake. Now, I'm smart enough to stay away from him. But I don't know if I'm, a, uh, I'm not as smart. I'm not as sneaky. We think that we are so strong. But we don't know how strong we are until we're tempted. And if we're not tempted, how are we going to know how strong we are? Because also... The devil means the accuser. He gets in there. Remember I told you that I had these two little guys on my shoulder coming, telling me to come back to church, and one was saying, go back to church, and one was saying, you don't need to go back to church. Go back to church. No, you don't need to go. Do you fight that way? Do you have things saying, well, it's okay. It's okay. Because... Years ago, as you went down, I don't do much traveling now, but I don't think they have it. Years ago, they used to have these big old signs along the road. And they would tell you the good things. There is a restaurant two miles ahead, and they show you this big platter of whatever they wish, you know, corned beef or, or uh, barbecue or whatever it is. And it just made it look so good. You say, I'm going to stop there. But then when you, if you were coming the other way, all you saw was the, the lit lumber. There was nothing perfect about that. There was nothing pretty about that. So when Satan deals with you, he shows you all these good little things. All these little good things. And, and let me tell you, when we desire something, that's why we need to pray, keep us from evil. Also, Satan is the adversary. He's our enemy. doesn't matter how good you think he is. It does not matter. He is our enemy. And so when Jesus was praying here, he said, while they was with me, I kept them. And now, verse 13, it says, and now come I to thee. Now I am going to leave them. You don't know what you have until you don't have it. You don't know what you can do until you've done it. And he said, now I'm going to leave them. Now they are on their own. How many have ever sent your kid, one of your kids, to kindergarten? That was so easy, wasn't it? 
It was so easy to see that little boy or girl about yay big and and all excited in the new clothes with the backpack on, and they're going to go to kindergarten. They're going to be there by themselves. But they're not going to be by themselves. No, but you're not going to be with them. So they're all excited, and they get into that door, and then they look around, and they don't know anybody. And there they are by themselves because you have left them. And Jesus said, now I am leaving them. Now I am come to thee. And these things I have spoken in the word. You fight the devil through the word. Remember when Jesus was tempted, fasted 40 days? I imagine he was, he was a man. I imagine he got hungry, he was thirst. He was a man and did Satan get you when you're at the lowest? When you are easy picking? That's when Satan comes a creeping at your door. The little girl said, When Satan comes knocking at my door, I send Jesus to answer it. When he comes knocking at my door, I kind of shiver. I think, What did I do? What am I going to do? Well, Jabez said, If thou would keep us. From evil. Verse 14 says, Because they are not of the world. Remember who you are? Remember who you are? There was a young man going out on a date with a girl, uh, and his dad, he went out, and, and his dad was saying, You know, you got to come back, be home at such and such, take it easy, don't drive your car, drive the car like you got some sense, and all this good little information. And before he walked out the door, he said, Remember who you are. Well, what do you mean by that? Because he was a Christian. Remember who you are. Jabez said, Would thou keep me from evil? Jesus wants us to be from evil. We need to remember who we are. We are a child of God. And he will keep us. But we need to allow him to keep us. How many has kids that you told what to do and they just act like they did not hear you? They have selective hearing. Yes, that is not easy. Now, how many of us have selective hearing when God speaks to us? Yes. He's not talking to me, he's talking to her. Chris gets up here and preaches, and he says, well, that's not for me, that's for him. I don't do that, that's for her. Well, it may be, but just listen to the next sentence. That might be for you. So he says there, I have given them thy word, and the, word hath, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. We are Christ-like. We are not of the world. But because we are not, that's why we need to pray, keep us from evil. Because his one desire, Satan's one desire, is to cause us to miss heaven. He doesn't want us to be happy. He doesn't want us to serve the Lord. He does not want us to prosper. He doesn't want anything good for us. We need to remember that. He doesn't want anything good for us. If it looks good, you better look at it twice. Because sometimes things that look good are not good. Then he goes on and he says, this is important. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world. Why not? We're saved. Why don't we take them? Because we have a purpose. We have a purpose. I can remember, I think I've told this before, Jackie, but about Mike. Mike Crabtree was in my Sunday school one day. And he came to me and he said, I want you to pray for me because where I am working, I, I, I'm the Christian and I want to be a witness for the Lord. And I said, great, 
you know, that's a young man wanting to do that. That's really, really something. So I began to pray, and a few weeks went by, and Mike came back to me, and he said, Would you pray that I get a different job? <laughs> and I said, Why do you want a different job? And he said, Because I am the only one that's saved, and I can't do anything, and I, I just pray that God would give me a different job. Well, he didn't say keep you in this world because you want a different job. If he's called you, he wants you that job. And if God has called you, then he will bless you. But you have to put yourself in the position, and you have to keep yourself from evil. But Mike wanted to be from evil, right? He wanted out of that place. I got so tickled at him. He said, pray that I get a different job. But he says, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. See, Jesus was praying this for us, that we would be kept from evil, because he knew. He knew how Christians was going to be taught or treated. He knew how they hated him. He knows how people don't like good, how nowadays the good is bad and the bad is good. We all know that. But we are the light in the darkness, and we should, we should shine our light. We should show them and be proud of who we are. How many, not, not Christians, how many are proud of who you are? Who you are? As a, as a, as a person, as what you do. Are you not proud? Well, you should be. And being a Christian is just one step better. It's just one step better. Now I want you to turn, if you will, to Second John. If I can quickly find it. Okay, Second John, chapter 2. All the things I've been talking about is in the Word. It says, love not the world... I remember when I was in school, a friend of ours, a friend of mine, we went to a pastor's home and we were talking about this scripture. Love not the world. And he was talking about it. The Bible says love not the world. And I said, well, you know, I like country western music. I like country music. And he said, the Bible said, love not the world. Because if you love the world, the love of the Father is what? Is not in you. Why? Because what you love is the world is taking the love from the Father that he wants. So you're not supposed to love any part of this world. How many of you guys love your car? Oh, you're not going to say that, are you? Uh-uh. How many of you people, women, love to cook? I just, I just love to do it. I love to do this. I love that. I lo- love is the most used word, I think, with the less meaning. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I don't ever say that. I don't ever say it. I usually say I appreciate you. But I don't say I love you. You say, well, that's not nice. Well, I have to agree with you. But I am not a loving person. And I don't, I don't spread that word around unless I really mean it. And a lot of people just use it as a fill-in. And to me, that just cuts me to a core. Oh, Laura, I haven't seen you for a long time. Oh, I love you. If you love me, it wouldn't take you all this time to see me. Now, let's have no, let's have no, okay. That's true. So if the love of the Father, it says, and love not the world, neither the things of the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him because the lo- God is jealous. He is a jealous God. And when you're giving your love to somebody else, 
It makes him angry. He doesn't like it. How many of you, husband, love your wife to give your, her love to somebody else? It goes on all the time. It's called adultery. It's all, it's all sin. And God knew this, and Jesus knew this. And he said, Father, keep them from evil. Put your word in them and let them hide it in their heart so that none of this will come. When Satan comes to tempt you, you will let Jesus answer the door. We need to get that down, people. You say, I do. I know that. Yes, we do. But think of how many times you felt God because of something you desired to do or something that you, you wanted to do or something that, that wasn't right and you know it. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't right. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing it. So why, why can't I do this? It, it's not wrong. But it ain't right. It ain't wrong, but it ain't right. So we need to know that we cannot love any part of the world. Verse 16 says, For all that is in the world... The lust of the flesh, oh my goodness. The lust of the flesh, desiring to have something that you want. The lust of the flesh. I want, I want, I want. I desire this. I don't know why God doesn't give it to me. Well, maybe because you don't need it. I've told you this before. Years ago, I wanted the van. Boys were growing up, and I wanted the van. And I had the van in my mind, what kind I wanted. Oh, I prayed about it and prayed about it. Lord, give me this van. Give me this van. Give me this van. And one day I was praying, and the thought came to me, and I guess it was God. He said, You can't afford it. I said, I don't care. I want it anyway. I, I, I need a car, so give me this van. And he said, you can't afford it. Well, that does not matter. That's what I want. Yeah, well. I opened up the, the paper, and there was a car. And he said, that's your car. Go to the fowls, and it will be there. I called my sister. I said, let's go to the fowls. We're going to get a car. She said, have you hunted one? No, nope, but it's in the paper. That's what I'm going to get. And I went to the fowls, and I said, this is a car I want. Well, there was two there. And I said, well, this is what God said. I don't know why he picked that. Well, the only difference was the one that God picked out had less, had less mileage on it. And the man said, you can take it home. I said, what? He said, you can take it home. And you can come back tomorrow, and we'll fill out the papers. I can't do that. He said, yes, you can. I said, no, I can't. <laughs> no, I can't. So I got home. I cleaned up my car, and I went what I was driving. I guess we what was taking me. Anyway, I go back, and it was all set. Why? Because that's what God said. You can have. That's what you need. I provide your needs. And you don't need that, then because you can afford this, but you can't afford that. See, the flesh, of, or the, the, the sin, the, the, the love, the flesh, is one who overruns. What is that? The uh, flesh is uh, willing, but the... How does that go? The spirit is willing, but the flesh... And, and that's, that's us, people. That is us. So I got the little car. I'm telling you, we, we just went everywhere in that little car. And it started falling apart. And I said, okay, here we go. So I told Wilma, I said, we need to look for the car. This thing is falling out. So we go out on 38. There used to be a car lot out there. And there was this old rickety van. I still wanted a van. <laughs> so I drove out there and I looked. Well, it wasn't very nice, but it was a van. 
So I, I go in there, and this guy comes up and says, can, can I help you? And I said, well, I was looking at this van out there, and he said, oh, you don't want that one, but I have one that you want. I got one. It's a one owner, a lady who very, very seldom drove it. She doesn't like it. And it's like brand new. And I went out there, and it was like brand new. I'm telling you, it was just what God had for me, and he made it all work out. I'm telling you, the, pride, the, the, the flesh gets in our way. God wants to bless us. And remember, Jacob, Jabez said, Lord, bless me indeed. And if we would just put ourselves out there, God will bless us. But our flesh gets in the way. Because why? We want what we want. When we want it. I want this. Well, when did you want it? I wanted it yesterday. But I want it more today. And if I don't get it, I want it more tomorrow. Doesn't matter. Did you pray about it? Oh, was I supposed to pray about it? Oh, I, I don't know if I was supposed to pray. I just know what I want. I'm like a little kid. You say, Laura, listen, look at your own life. Look at your own life and see if you're not like that. You want to get up here and tell me a little bit about yourself? I'm all ears. Let me tell you, God is good. He's good to me. He's good to you if we put our flesh back and do what he wants us to do. Then it says, and the lust of the eye. Oh, my goodness. Supposed to go around with my eyes closed. Can't see anything. And when I read this, I think of of Brother Hill. You know, Brother Hill used to preach with his eyes closed. Yeah. He told us one day why he did that. Anybody remember why he did that? Yeah. Remember all the many girls that wasn't many, much of it? And they, and they would sit up here in the front? Uh-huh. The lust of the eye. Well, he's a minister. Yes, he is, but he's a man. And the lust of the eyes. The eyes is the gate that causes the sin to come into and then it goes down to the heart where it reproduces. I'm telling you, it's the lust of the eye that gets people in trouble. We are not, uh, we are not taken out. We are to be the light, and the light goes into our eyes. And I'm telling you, we sin because we see a lot. We look at things. Oh, I don't have a computer, but I know most of you do. And I'm sure a lot of it's good, but I think there's a lot more that isn't. And I believe that there's more looking at what isn't than what is. You say, how dare you say that? Well, let me tell you, I was reading statistics one day, and it said that there were more ministers that was caught up in pornography because of the computer. Easy to come by, easy to find, and nobody knows about it. Nobody, nobody but God. Well, I'm in my own house, I'm looking at my own computer at my own time, and I don't see anything wrong with it. Well, maybe not. But what are you watching? What is getting in from your eyes is sinking down to your, to your heart. You see a pretty little girl walking past. I remember Pat Boone saying, my girls got saved and they're going to win men by the way that they talk, not the way they wiggle when they walk. It's something. You need to teach your kids. You need to teach your kids. I was talking to Matt, and he said there's something called deconstructive. Have you ever heard of that? Dan, have you ever heard of anything called deconstructive? You're being over at Purdue. I thought maybe you had. It's something that's going around now, and I don't know much about it. But in this deconstructive, it's where the people are being drawn out of church because they can cleanse themselves. They can find out who they really are. I know myself. 
And I don't know if what God said is right or not. So I, I just don't know. Listen, if you don't know, you're not saved. So they're trying to get rid of everything that they've been taught because they don't know if it's right or not. And it's called deconstructed because we are to instruct our children, teach them in the ways that they should go, and they will not depart from it. You say, well, my kids came to church for all time and they're not here. Yes, that's true. But the word is still with them. And you say, how do you know? Because I see it in my own son. He doesn't go to church. But he is a very decent man. And he knows right from wrong because of what was taught. When he was in Iraq, he called me at home and said, Mom, this man that is a friend of mine wanted me to go out, with, go out on the town with him. And he has a date. Mom, he's married. And I told him that was not right. And I was not going out with him. You see, when people come to us and see us when we are standing firm, then they will see what they need to see, that you are really grounded in the Word. The Word hasn't departed from him. He knows. He knows. 